Hi guys, you're really welcome to the first chat of 2023. And today we're going to talk about what happens when the narcissist loses control of you. We'll talk about the, the events that transpire, the typical behaviour pattern of a narcissist when this happens, when they're actually with you and then as they become without you. So we go through the stages and see if it resonates with you. And it's good to have the information if you're with a narcissist and this may be happening at this present moment in time. Before we get right into it, can I just say that all the podcasts are now, nearly the back catalogue is uploaded on all of the major um, podcast hosting platforms like Spotify, Audible, Google, Stitcher, all these different uh, platforms. And the other thing I'd like to say is on this channel, we run a buddy program and that is very simple. It's just a case of leaving a comment in the comment section that you would like to buddy up with someone as a supportive partner to share, you know, your experiences to get a bit of support on your journey. You just leave that you would like a buddy and leave the area you live in or the time zone you live in so that it might be, you know, more suitable in relation to when you can contact each other. So that's it in relation to the buddy program. I haven't mentioned it for a while, but that's what we do in this channel. And I know people have managed to support each other in this process. So let's look at what happens when the narcissist loses control of you. So what does that actually mean? That means when you've copped on to the fact that you're being abused and taken for a ride, you may not have been aware that you were with a narcissist. You may not have received this education at that point in time, but you do realize that there's something too far off for you to continue putting up with this behavior. So you start to establish boundaries and you challenge the narcissist on the way they're treating you. And what does that look like? That looks like you no longer bend over backwards to serve the narcissist, that you take some time out for yourself, that you maybe stop supplying the narcissist with money or you ask them to contribute to the bills where you live or any number of things that, you know, that, that, that's that been an unfair balance in the relationship that you're trying to balance out and get your some of your needs met. That's challenging the narcissist's control of you and they will work a series of manipulations to try and reestablish that control. But this video or this podcast is about when the narcissist actually loses control of you. When you say no more, eh, eh, no, no more is coming out of me. I know who you are and this isn't going to work. Or the narcissist has done something irreparable like cheating on you, etc. Basically, you are mega pissed off at this person and you're in a state of mind that you want to end the relationship. The first thing that may happen, and again, these are a series of things, and you'll probably find two or three of them happen in your case. So let's go through them. All of them may not happen. The first thing that may happen, particularly if there's been a huge transgression and it hasn't been gradual, such as the narcissist cleaning out your bank account, the narcissist cheating, that kind of level of, of thing that the narcissist has actually been caught out and lost control of you. You would likely get a big apology, a big apology from the narcissist if their control of you was tethering on this point and they hadn't finished getting what they wanted from you, and they still wanted to maintain the relationship. The apology at this stage can sometimes actually work, believe it or not, because it may be the first time that you've ever received an apology from this person. And they will go on to word salad you about how much they will change, how much they love you, and, you know, what they're going to do, that they've really realized, you know, that they, they have issues and they'll go to therapy. That kind of gist of apology. You'll say to yourself, wow, wow, 
this person has never, they've never apologized before. They've never been like this before. Maybe finally, um, all my love and, you know, the work that we've been doing or the work that I've been doing to help this person has paid off and they finally see the light. And this is them after traveling and bringing you to a very dark place. But such is the psychological and emotional manipulation and abuse that you will have been through that you may accept their apology. If the apology doesn't work and you've had your fill of them and you've been working on yourself and if you've thankfully received education in relation to narcissistic abuse and remember share share the information so other people will get it then they will possibly if you're telling them that the relationship is over and that they have to leave they will hoover hoover in bed as i would call this turn of phrase they will plant a seed where they will meekly leave you and leave the situation as you've asked them they will comply with everything given the apology hasn't worked and they will set little seeds by sending you messages to say they understand where you're coming from and they're you know still very sorry they will always love you they will always love you and these three words will plant a seed or can plant a seed in the target's mind where you're actually left with that you're left with that seed to grow and they will come back and water it from time to time with an embedding hoover hoping that as the seed grows in you and as you miss them and remember you're left a shell of yourself so you don't have at this point in time the resources within you that you will hopefully go on in your life's journey to grow but at this point in time you're vulnerable after the chaotic shock and everything has passed that seed that they left in you that they'll always love you can begin to take a hold of you and soften you up for a hoover to come in the future so that's another thing that can happen and that's what i call embedding the hoover potential in you for the future the next thing they can do is they can guilt trip you if they still are in communication with you or they can get it through to a flying monkey you know with a flying monkey to you the message that ah, at the end of the day your love was conditional you didn't offer me unconditional love and this is disgusting guys this is disgusting because you went into that relationship and you unconditionally loved this person in fact you so unconditionally loved this person that you did everything for them to the detriment of your well-being sometimes and giving more to them than you'd give to yourself. Unconditional, beautiful, generous love. And then when they meet out to you a series of abusive transgressions or abusive behaviour, and you finally put up a boundary, they call that a condition. That you only love me if I do this, this and this your way. That you're trying to control me. And that is an absolute mind you know what. To tell you, to guilt trip you at that stage. And of course they will add in a dollop of blame shifting. You know, it being your fault and you need to introspect. We've gone there many times before, guys. I know what you're, you know what I'm talking about. But that guilt trip in the, you know, phases like, ah, your love was conditional and, you know, you're so controlling and you need to lighten up and you need, need to be more generous. They're totally projecting onto you this awful guilt tripping stuff to leave you again with things like that and the embedded hoover in that I will always love you and you and I are meant to be together and all this absolute BS. 
The next thing they could do and should do, um, being a narcissist, is reaching out to your family and friends. And they'll do it in such a way that they're concerned about your overreaction to something that you perceive them to have done that they didn't do. And they're concerned about your state of mind and blah, blah, you, you get the rest. They will come in as being the loving, healthy partner and downplaying your judgment, your ability and your mental health. They will try to give the picture to your family and friends that you're mentally unstable. And guys, at the end of a narcissistic relationship, with all the bullshit that goes down, we are mentally unstable. Or we can give the impression that we're mentally unstable. We're just getting some balance again, having gotten rid of the narcissist. But remember, this is a hugely traumatic time. There are a lot of post-trauma symptoms going on in you. So the narcissist saying to your family and friends they're concerned about you can often have a, an element of truth about it not being what they mean about you being mentally unstable in a, a permanent you know, condition, that that's the way you came into the relationship. They have caused you to be mentally unstable and then they use that, they use that against you to kind of make your family and friends believe in something that's believable but not from the right perspective, if you get what I mean. This can be destabilizing to you on your recovery journey because they plant that seed with your family and friends. If your family and friends have bought into the narcissist's mask at any stage. That's just another thing they do. Now, this is when they lose control of you and they know they've lost control of you. These are kind of attempts at regaining control softening you up to be to come under their control again um destabilizing your escape um and psychologically abusing you again because they're twisting the knife that they have stuck into you the next thing that i have found with narcissists is if they really, really, really can't with the manipulations, with their toolbox of manipulations that they have already used on you, and the this little soup song of new post-control manipulations don't bring you back under control, they will launch into a smear campaign this can be a delayed smear campaign if they want to leave time to soften you up in relation to the embedded hoovers, you know, the toing and the froing and giving you time to come to your senses, so to speak, should they wish to return to you if you have something that they're still after that they need to get from you. The smear campaign can be delayed, but the smear campaign will come. The smear campaign in itself is carried out in a number of ways. One way, which is the most dangerous, is if the narcissist has any leverage with you, in that if they know or have access to your employment, to your boss, to your colleagues, or they have any influence over your job, they can at this stage pull that lever and smear you to your employer. If they don't have a foot in there, they may have children with you. They will use the children as tools against you to control you and to get a sense of their superiority and a sense of power again into writing, into writing wrongs they perceived you have done to them because going against them is a wrong in their mind. Anything that threatens the narcissist's sense of reality. See, narcissists mould reality 
to their reality. And they impose their reality on their surroundings and circumstances. That's their narcissism. That's their protective shield. They will manipulate, change, gaslight, blame shift, and basically distort reality as everybody else knows it into their perception of reality. Even factually will change things or give a different slant on things. Now, we all have our own perceptions and subjective views, you know, of how we deal with an actual reality. But the narcissist makes actual reality flip on its head. So if you threaten what they have told you is their reality, they will really come at you or have to do their damnedest, damnedest to get control of that back. Because without their manufactured reality that they deal in, they don't exist. They can't exist. That's exposure. Remember when they started off in life, they decided that they didn't like the world as it was reacting with them so that they would create their own world and they would control what happened in that world. That's their narcissism. So getting back to when they lose control over you, they will use the tools at their disposal, disposable, disposal in relation to work situations and children or divorce proceedings, etc., to regain a sense of power and control and reestablish their reality in the world. The very last thing a narcissist will do when they have absolutely no option Supposing they have no leverage over you, that you didn't own a house together, a business together, have children together, or they have no access to your employment to influence anyone. They will then smear you to all and sundry in order to make you out to be a hopeless case, the bad guy or the bad gal who who has totally no credibility, who is a disgusting human being and who is clueless and mentally unstable because you didn't choose them. So that, in effect, reestablishes their control over you from a distance. And they often decide and even say, I will never speak to you again. And again, it's a kind of a childish cruel, childish, flippant reaction to re-establishing control in their own world, to negating any accountability for their part in you blowing them off, you know, telling them you don't want anything to do with them, by them having the last word and actually withdrawing from you and the situation and smearing you to all and sundry puts you in a box in their mind where you're under control. That's their way of taking control in a situation where they have no control. So it's again fantasizing a reality that they make for themselves in the world, that their narcissism makes for them, and they will decide never to speak to you again if you have totally transgressed and punched against their reality and you've gotten too deep in behind the narcissist's shield, they will punish you and control you in this manner. So guys, that's the way it goes down, in my opinion, and from what I've seen in many, many situations, how narcissists attempt to regain control of you when they've lost control of you, and that's, in my opinion, what happens when narcissists lose control of you. I hope that helps. Let's talk again very soon. And in the meantime, have a blessed day and a good week ahead. And yeah, we'll meet again soon. Take care, guys. Bye.